You see, a lot of people have the wrong view. I belong to this Dharma center. I'm working for this Lama. I'm doing this job, and I'm doing them a favor. I'm doing the Dharma a favor. I'm doing the center a favor. I'm doing Rinpoche a favor because I took time away and I sacrificed my time to help what? So I took my time away and I sacrificed to help. And the minute the Lama doesn't say something, I lie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye Lama. Go to another Lama. Go to another center. Go to a whole other whatever. Or maybe even give up. Why do we give up? Because they didn't say something I like. So bye-bye. So the students always have this threatening mudra. Bye-bye. The Lama says threatening mudra too. Bye-bye. So what's my point? The attitude is wrong. When we serve the Dharma, we serve the three jewels, the attitude shouldn't be that I did something for you. The attitude must be you gave me the chance to do something to collect merit. So whenever we do something for our guru, you're not doing him a favor. He's doing you a favor. When you think that your lama is letting you do, let you do yourself a favor, then your attitude will change. You will not fight with your lama. You will not think, I did something. You will not run around proud as a peacock. I did this and this and this. Why? If you know the real meaning behind serving a Buddha guru, Buddha or guru, you will not say that. You will never say that. Real Dharma practitioners always do Dharma work, always serve their teachers, always practice, always push themselves towards the teachers and do more and more. And they never ever tell people what they have done and what they have done if they don't get a reward, they don't get angry, throw a BF and run away. People who run away, who throw a BF, have the attitude that I'm doing you a favor, guru. So you better tell me what I want to hear. You better do what I like. And you better fit yourself to me. So if the attitude is, you're doing the guru a favor by attending Dharma teachings, what I attended, what? Imagine that. So next time we see Shakyamuni, he gives teaching, we say, I did you a favor, you know? If I didn't show up, you wouldn't have that many people. You lose face, Buddha. Think about it. When you show up in Dharma teachings, you're doing yourself a favor. You're putting some wisdom in your ears. You are getting knowledge. The Lama is giving you free, enlightened energy. Information. When the Lama does prayers and pujas, you're the lucky one. Don't sit there with all your jewelry and all your hair and everything going, oh, I'll, all right, I'll get a blessing. I'll do him a favor. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh I can't. I got caught. <laughs> the whole attitude is wrong. And that's what we need to change here in Malaysia. Why? Because people here are intelligent and we can tell them the truth and they go, oh, yeah. Because that's how it is in the Buddhist countries. Example, when I go to Thailand, when I go to Thailand, when I was there last week, one of my favorite activities, one of the favorite is offering food for the monks. Where you can go make food to the offering to the monks. You get up around 6, 6 a.m., you get there around 6.30, 7, you can make food. They have stalls ready, you can buy it, and the monks walk by from the temples, so you can directly make offerings to them. Oh, it, it's so beautiful. Anyway, I like that, we did that. And my point is, some people have wrong thought because some of the monks walk by with big, huge bags. Huge bags of lots of food. No monk can eat that much in the morning. So what happens, they, off, they have their offering bowl, when they come near you, they go like this. And they can't speak, you put in whatever, and then there's an assistant nearby, a male assistant, and they take the offerings out immediately and put it in a big bag. The bowl is this big, but their bag is huge. Some have two bags. Some, they have so much bags of food, they have to take a tuk-tuk back to their temple. Then some people have the wrong thought, this monk's so greedy. No, wrong, wrong. Then the high lamas are greedy. Then the Buddha is greedy. Then Kuan Yin is very greedy. Kuan Yin is the goddess of greed. Why? Why? Then God is greedy. God is very greedy. When people build beautiful mosques and all that stuff, it's for God. Why? He's very greedy. I don't think they're greedy. Why? They allow you to collect merit. So the monks have just one dish. It's enough. They don't have 20 stomachs. The monks walk up and down because why? There are less monks and there are more lay people. So the monks don't accept the offering. The lay people feel, like, oh, I didn't make an offering. A lot of people in the morning stop in their cars, run out of their cars and make an offering. They're all dressed in office wear. And then the minute they make offerings, they pray, they run back in their car and they go to work. Many times. So there's not enough monks. In Thailand, there's more lay people than monks. Same thing in Tibet. So the monks are very compassionate. They go on a few rounds to collect the offerings. Then they go back, they give to the older ones, they give to the poor, they give to the sick. 
They give to the uh, nuns. They give to everybody else who, who need. They give to the lay people who don't have food. They give to, What do you think the monks do? Pack, repack it and then package it and they put monk foods, monk frozen products? I don't think so. What do you think the monks are going to do with all that food? Even if the monk is very greedy, even if the monk very greedy in Thailand, which I doubt, if they have three bags of food, it's all perishable. What? It's soya bean, it's fish, it's all types of food. So even if they take back, they're so greedy, what can they do? You think each monk got four refrigerators inside his room? Huh? I don't think so. Even if he got four refrigerators, how to get the money to buy and also the, air, the, the electricity? So the monks are very kind. Why? They're like, if it's me, I'm like, oh, <laughs> enough, thank you. If I'm, I'm one of those guys walking up down, I'm saying, enough, I'm on a diet. <laughs> but these guys can't do that. They're really good monks. So whatever people offer, they have to take it. So if it's three bags, four bags, if they suffer, have to take tuk-tuk, what to do? Even a tuk-tuk, take them back for free, I think. So when people look at it, they have wrong view. They say, oh, these monks are so greedy. No, 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 no. The monks allow you to receive the offerings, make the offerings that allow you to collect merit. The Buddhas allow you to collect merit. The Buddha, the Dharma, and Sangha exist to help you to collect merit. So when we serve the Buddha, when we serve the Dharma Center, when we serve the Sangha, for example, in Ganden, you're not doing them a favor. They're doing you a favor. Why? The monks are the ones holding the vows. The monks are the ones with their hair shaved, wearing robes, running around barefoot, staying in a small house, cannot do business, cannot have family, nothing. They totally restrict themselves. They study Dharma, they meditate, they do retreat, and they become, they push themselves to a lot of extreme and difficulties. And that you support. Why do you support that? Because you can't do it. You can't do it, so you support something. It's just like someone who, who has a family member, I'm sorry to say, who have suffered from a serious illness, we support that, like cancer society or something, because we saw their suffering and we want other people not to have it. Same thing. So similarly, we support the monks. Don't think you're doing a favor. Oh, I support a monk. Aren't I good? Yes, YSG, you're so good. No. Oh, I serve my guru, but I, 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 I had a cat fight with him and I slapped him and I told him off and I reported him to immigration and told him that he's a runaway maid because I'm not happy with him anymore, huh? Where God? Then the guru shows you a slightly black face, slightly like, then you're angry. You ignore the guru. You hate the guru. You avoid the guru. You don't like, why? Because you always have the attitude, you are doing the guru a favor. Some people say, well, that's not my guru. I am doing him a favor. No. This guru may be benefiting and helping many people that you can't help. So when you help him, through him, you're helping many other people. So you're not, doing your, you're not doing him a favor. You're doing yourself a favor because he can help many people. Many people. So the attitude that is pervasive around here that must absolutely change, and I've heard it also in the West of America, and I've seen people get angry at my gurus and talk back and act funny. I've seen it. Mostly people who don't have dharma very strong because they have the attitude that I'm doing you a favor. No. If you have the attitude you're doing your guru or the Buddha or the dharma or the sangha a favor, if you have that attitude, then every day you do dharma work, you don't collect merit. How can you? That means... The guru, the Buddha, the Dharma, and Sangha collects merit from you. So are you an object of making merit? Suddenly the tables have switched. You're the merit giver, they're the merit maker. So Buddha comes and makes merit and offers gold on your face. Buddha comes, sits there, you sit on, all of us sit on top. He sits there with Tara and Tsongkhapa, they do talk for you. La, 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 la. You're the Buddha. How can that be? So our thought must change. And what's that thought? that we are doing the Dharma a favor. No, 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 my dear. You're doing yourself a favor. Each person, if you have helped the Dharma, helped the Dharma Center, receive the Dharma and receive peace and happiness, you collect the merit to receive peace and happiness in your own family, within yourself, with your children, with your lineage. You collect the merit. Because why? You created that in other people. When you create terror in other people, you will receive terror and fear back. Even if you're super wealthy, kidnap, many types of fear come to you. Many times. Your children won't listen to you. They go off. Disharmony, fighting, loss of money, lots of things can happen. 
Don't ever feel you're secure. Nobody's secure in samsara. No one. No one. So therefore, if you always have the attitude you're doing a favor for the Lama, you're doing a favor for the Buddha, you're wrong. Why? Logically speaking, how can you be doing them a favor when they're the highly realized beings and they've taken vows and they're holding their vows and they're working very hard. They sacrifice their whole life to spread the Dharma. They sacrifice their whole, even lay Lamas, they sacrifice their whole life to spread the Dharma. Unlike you, who have a great time, enjoy yourself, don't want to sacrifice, even find it difficult to go to Dharma Center, even find it difficult to sit for a few hours. These masters and lamas sit for thousands and thousands of hours of Dharma talks to listen to come and teach you. So for you cannot even make it, cannot put an effort. So how can you not be serving them? So when you serve your guru and you make things easy for your guru, you make it on an intellectual level, you make work run well. And you make things smooth. Financially, everything's taken care of so your guru doesn't have to go and work. I've seen that in America. Some gurus have to work and take so much time away from their dharma practice. When you make that easy, you're doing yourself a favor. Why? Everything you invest into that is investing into yourself. And when you help the dharma, when you help the dharma, you are helping yourself. The dharma allows you the honor to serve it. And when you serve the Sangha, same. And when you serve a Dharma center, when you serve a Dharma center, you should walk in with your head bent. You should walk in very humble. You should walk in as if you were in a cold, wandering around, lost. And someone opened the door with warmth and light and food and a hot cup of Milo say, welcome in. That's the attitude you should have when you come to Dharma Center. Those of us who do Dharma work and don't do it well. Those of us who are sneaky in our Dharma work. Those of us who are not committed to our Dharma work. And those of us who run away and escape from Dharma work. You only escape and run away from yourself. But that's temporary. Why? You're not helping the Dharma. You're not helping the Lama. You're not helping the Guru. You're helping yourself. You are helping yourself. So the fundamental thinking of, I am serving the Dharma, must be there. So when the guru asks you to do things, you shouldn't think, ah, yeah. And then you go tell people and say, ah, yeah, I'm so good. I'm so good. I went to, I went to the guru's temple. I went to Kachara house and I swept the floor once, you know, last year, June 13th at, at 3 p.m. I swept the floor and I left at 3.15 and I dedicated my merits. Your mer I'm so wonderful. Ah, yeah. That's why the Buddha put the sunglasses on again. If the Buddha asks you, if, if your guru asks you to do something like do some dharma work, produce, take on a post, be a member, be a committee, attend talk. If the guru tells you to do some dharma work that benefit others, you should think, what an honor. What an honor, because it is like that. What kind of honor? For you to collect merit. That is the real attitude. So when you have that kind of attitude, anyone who has that kind of attitude, think about it carefully, okay? Think about it very carefully. You will never complain about Dharma work again. Ah, yeah. I can be at home getting a massage and having, having, having my, 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 my boyfriend, my husband, my lover lick my whole body and lick my toe and feed me and I'm all right. And I drag myself here to do you a favor. Before I was like that and now I'm like that. Ah, yeah. Ah, yo. So what you should think? That person's not bad. He, he don't know. She don't know. So you give him knowledge. Is it mind manipulation? No, it's the truth. If it's not the truth, why do you put Buddha statue and Buddha books and your guru's picture on the altar? Why is it when they're on the altar, you do like that? When they're in front of you, you do like that. In front of the altar, you see Rimchi's picture, you offer candle, you offer incense. When the guru tells you, hey, can you time, take time away, do some Dharma work? No, I don't have time. Slap. Why? What kind of respect is that? And then the minute you go outside, another center, another person who look at you and say, oh, look, you got victim written all over your forehead. Victim, stupid, and no study, and lazy written. So they look, they got their fourth eye. Third eye is to see Buddha, fourth eye is to see devil. So they got their fourth eye, they look at you, you walk by, you got this written, stupid. They go, oh, come here. And they talk to you. Do you know you're practicing the wrong lineage? <laughs> really? Do you know that your guru is not a real guru? <laughs> really?
Do you know your guru is practicing <gasps> the wrong deity? <gasps> oh dear, how tired. Do you know that your Dharma center is not pure? They look like a big snake in the Garden of Eden, and your Eve sitting there saying, eat the apple, eat the apple, eat the apple, and you're sitting there like, <gasps> how? I'm covering my private parts. Which hand? So you know Eve in the Garden of Eden? Some of you might know the Bible. She's covering herself, and she goes to the you know, forbidden area, and there's an apple tree. She's not supposed to eat the apple, and the snake is saying, eat, eat, eat. She's like, <gasps> really? Somewhere she goes back to Adam and says, you eat too, and that's why we're all here. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know what happened. She didn't eat the apple. Maybe we're all hanging around, no clothes on. And I, for some of you, I'm glad she ate the apple. Oh, dear. <laughs> Look at you. For some of you, can imagine running around with no clothes on, just a leaf. The minute someone criticizes your lineage, your lama, you lose faith so quick, you believe so fast. Even if it's not your lama, but they, are, you, they say negative things and you believe that about another lama, you're already written stupid on your forehead. Just chop, stupid. Why? Never think negative things about other lamas. You don't have to follow, you don't have to do, but it doesn't mean they're wrong. And a lot of people, they want self-confidence. They, they don't have confidence in their life. They don't have confidence about themselves and a lot of things that they do. So what they do is, in religion, they try to find confidence, but the wrong way. So if they're following a big crowd, a big temple with a lot of rich people and a lot of famous people inside, it's the right one. If they follow a small little rinky-dink temple with not many people, not many uh, whatever, they think, oh, it's the wrong place. No. Some greatest lamas in Tibet have very small hermitages with very small students, very little bit, um, a, a very simple houses. The greatest lamas in Tibet. It's how they wish to manifest. Some of the greatest monks in Thailand, they never teach. They stay in the forest and meditate. People go look for them all over the forest. It has nothing to do with that. So our fundamental attitude must change. If our fundamental attitude changes that the guru is allowing me to collect merit, the Dharma is allowing me to collect merit. The Sangha is allowing me to collect merit. The Dharma center, the institution is allowing me to collect merit. Our whole attitude will change. Whole thing. So when the Guru asks you, can you sponsor this and this? You won't simply go, oh, yeah, I don't want to sponsor, I don't have money, I don't have money, I don't have money, I don't have money. Then you drive home and you and which car I drive to the center, I got six, seven cars, which one? Uh, eating, 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 but ask them to sponsor, they cannot, but they got seven cars to drive to the center. Oh, which, which one? Then you ask them to do work. You ask them to do some work and volunteer in the center. They don't have time because they're dating five girls. They have to go out to the disco Friday night and Saturday night. They have to go shopping on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And they have to go for din din on Monday and Tuesday. So they have Sunday afternoon, two hours free. After that, no free. Silly. Then you ask people to do Dharma. You ask people to attend Dharma talk or do Dharma teachings or do Dharma work or anything. And they say, no, I have to do business. I have to fly here, do this, do that, do this. No. That's ridiculous. Then you're giving your opportunity away. You're giving, how come for business, for money, for girls, for fun, for entertainment, we run there. But how come for Dharma, we have to be begged? It shows you our attitude is different. So never say that you did this for your Lama. You gave this for your Lama. You should say, I didn't give enough. I didn't do enough. And it's never enough to Lama Buddha. You should never say, ah, oh, enough Dharma teaching, enough Dharma practice. Wrong. If you think like that, your fundamental thinking is wrong. If your fundamental thinking is wrong, the foundation is wrong, how can the house be built? That means, how can you gain result of Dharma practice? If you always think you're doing Dharma a favor, if you think that, and you want honor and respect and people to kowtow to you because you did something for the Dharma or the Guru and you want all this respect, then you don't collect any merit. Why don't you collect any merit? Because your attitude is wrong. If you, example, if you put a, a lamp in front of the Buddha and you wish for one of, your, one of the people you don't like to die, that's not Dharma practice. So you put a candle in front of the Buddha and say, may that person die, 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 die. Every day you put a candle, may they die, die, die. That's not Dharma practice. But outside people look at you, oh, you're so good. You're so holy. You offer a candle to Buddha every day and prostrate. What are you praying for them to die? Or you pray, hey, next door business go down, your business go up. My business go up, your business go down. So you have a hairdressing business and you want their business next door hairdressing go down, your go up. You pray to Buddha, may their business go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. Mine go up, up, up so I can benefit the Dharma. Huh? Even the Buddha be like, Really? Uh, 
first time Buddha confused when you say like that. I want to help the Dharma design. Their business go down, I go up. How can that be? That's not Dharma. Why is it not Dharma? It contradicts. We can use our wisdom. So my teaching is what? Not for you to come and worship me. Not for you to say, yes, 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 everything I say. I give you knowledge and you think. I give you knowledge. Why? There's too many of you. I can't have tea and coffee with you every single day. I can't answer your questions every day. If every one of you wrote an email to me, I would just delete it. Too many. So I give you knowledge. I give you knowledge so you have the fundamental idea and teaching and then you yourself think. You yourself think. That's very, very important. You yourself think whether how to figure this situation out. So someone cannot be there and figure out every situation for you, but you yourself get the information and then you figure out every situation much better. So that's why when we do work for the Dharma, when we do work for our Guru, when we do work for the center, we should think, I have the opportunity to serve. Not make it difficult for the center. Not make it difficult for the Dharma. Not make it difficult for your Guru. Not make it all so problematic for your Guru. And then some more, when the Guru or the center or someone in there say something you don't like, you run away and complain and have coffee and tell people how much you have done. Once you start telling people, start telling people how much you did. Everything you did was not Dharma already. Why was it not Dharma? Can see your attitude. A person who does Dharma becomes more humble, more quiet, more forgiving, more nice, more kind. So the fundamental attitude here, the fundamental basis, then foundation must change. That is to stop thinking, I'm doing them a favor, the three jewels. The three jewels are doing me a favor. If we think like that, Anger will go away. Appreciation will arise. Some people, after many years of being with their guru and teacher, they look back, they lose their chance, and they say, oh, now I realize what, what my teacher has been telling me, but it's too late. Sometimes the teacher is dead. Sleep, we can sleep anytime. Eat, we can sleep, eat anytime. Make money anytime, we can make money. But to be near our guru, to receive dharma, this one's very rare. Very, very rare. To do Dharma work with our Guru, to listen to Dharma, to get the Dharma is very rare. Eat, sleep, do business, anytime. It doesn't bring us much benefit. But to do Dharma work, to listen to the Dharma, to practice Dharma, is very beneficial. And some of us lose our chance. When I went to see my Guru's body recently in Thailand, that's exactly what I thought. I need to work harder for the Dharma now. He's dead. 52. I wanted to bring him here. I wanted to invite him here in the future teachings, but we're not ready. It was quite sad. 